flashing five, and then again the beam that sweeps far out to sea. Flash, pause, and flash once more. The beam that reached inland to me to calm my childish fears. That steady lamp rotating still, though it has shone for countless years, may soon be darkened, empty, dead. Your beacon, banded white and red, proud pillar on the shingled shore, a sea mark for our homing ships as long as we remember and centuries before, may crumble on the stricken ness. Then only church and castle, as in far distant times, will mark this edge of England, our wild historic strand. There was no lighthouse there, obviously, in, in medieval times. In 1627, uh, 32 ships were wrecked in one weekend off Orford Ness, and people woke up to the fact that it might be a good idea to have, a, have some kind of uh, warning for ships approaching at that point. It turned into a, a set of private leases for different individuals. They, they put two lights because there had to be a transit between the two for people avoiding the, the banks. The small light was lit by candles, and the great light, which was in the centre of Orford Ness, uh, was worked by coal. There were a lot of uh, political problems uh, concerning these leases, which led to uh, very few improvements being made to the lighthouse, the result of which um, was that the low light was constantly falling into the sea or being washed away by the sea. And then the great light became the low light, and they built a new great light. But most of these were timber, and only, only the later ones were built in brick. Eventually, in uh, January 1837, Trinity House, uh, which had been formed a century earlier, was put in charge of all the lighthouses in England, uh, in, in the UK, and uh, uh, in 37 they took over the lease. Under shingle, under sand. Time to switch off, decree those landsmen, office bound. But from the hurrying waves that eat away the shore, voices from a sunken world, the generations cry, stand on, stand proudly on, and long the sea defy. Mm -hmm.